Hello to all my viewers, students, and subscribers. This is Jeff Amboy, and welcome to another episode of my lecture series in physics. In this episode, I will solve several problems involving magnetism and electromagnetism. We will be using the concepts and the formulas that we have learned, including magnetic forces on charged particles and current carrying conductors. I will also solve problems involving the motion of charged particles in magnetic field, magnetic flux, and magnetic field calculations. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Problem number one. A beam of protons moves at 3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second through a uniform 2 Tesla magnetic field directed along the positive Z axis. The velocity of each proton lies in the XZ plane and is directed at 30 degrees to the positive Z axis. Find the force on the proton. So to solve this problem, gawa muna tayo ng uh, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. Okay? Gawa tayo ng x, y, z axis. No? So ito yung x, y, and z axis. Okay. Now, i-plot natin yung mga vectors. Meron tayo ditong velocity. Tapos yung velocity na yan, nandun daw sa x, z plate. Tapos, yung magnetic field directed along the positive z-axis. So, unahin ko nang ilagay dito yung magnetic field. No? Nandun daw siya sa positive z-axis. So, ito ngayon yung magnetic field natin na B. Next, yung velocity vector natin, it's in the xz plane. Ito yun, no? X tapos z. So, para makita mo yung plane, lagyan ko dito ng dashed lines. Yan. So, we have the xz plane. Tapos, ano yung angle? Uh, directed at 30 degrees to the positive z-axis. Okay, so, gawa ako dito ng velocity vector. Gawin natin kulay red. Okay, ito yung velocity vector. Okay, V. Lagyan natin ang label at lagay natin yung angle na magkano daw? 30 degrees. So, this angle is 30 degrees. Now, ano ang force na nararamdaman ng proton? The magnetic force experienced by a charged particle moving in a magnetic field is given by this formula. F is equal to QVB sine of theta. This is the magnitude of the force. Okay? So, kung ilalagay natin dito yung charge, charge ng proton yan. ba? So, that's uh, the same as the charge of an electron. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Next is the velocity, which is 3 times 10 raised to 5 meters per second multiplied by the magnetic field which is 2 tesla and multiply natin yan ng sine of theta sir ano ba yung theta theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector which is 30 degrees so lagyan natin dito ng sine of 30 degrees tapos compute na natin yan sa calculator so, yung charge ng electron, gamitin ko na lang yung constant sa calculator na E. ba? That's constant 23. Tapos, multiply natin yan ng velocity na 3 times 10 raised to 5 times 2 times sine of 30 degrees. Make sure naka-degree mode ang calculator mo. Ayan, naka-degree tayo. Okay? So, pag pinindot natin sa equal sign, ang lalabas sa sagot is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay? So, the magnitude of the force is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons. Napakaliit lang na force niyan. Okay? So, halimbawa, gusto mong malaman yung direction ng force. Gawin natin vector force yan. Paano ko malalaman yung direction? Okay? Para malaman mo yung direction, i-curl mo lang yung four fingers mo mula sa velocity vector. Kasi remember, this force can be written as a cross product. QV cross B. Okay? Tapos yung velocity vector natin, yun yung unang vector. No? At ang pangalawang vector is yung magnetic field. So, uh, using your right hand, you curl your four fingers from the velocity vector towards the magnetic field vector. San tuturo yung thumb mo? Kung saan tumuro yung thumb, yun yung direction ng force. Okay? So, in this case, ang direction ng force is pakaliwa. 
Okay? Kasi papunta yan dito eh. Ayun, velocity vector towards the magnetic field. San tumuro yung thumb mo? Diba sa kaliwa? Okay. So kung kukunin natin yung vector force, magiging negative 4.8 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons yan. In what direction? In the direction of negative y axis. So, we now have the vector force. Okay? So, ganun lang kasimple yan, ha? So, tandaan natin yung formula sa pagkocompute ng force. QVB sine theta. And, para malaman yung direction ng force, you can use your right hand. Right hand rule lang yan. Okay? Now, let us solve another problem. Number 2. An electron in an old style television picture tube, yan, yung lumang TV, the bulky yung likod, no? Sa loob nun, may mga coil of wire. So sabi dito, yung mga electrons daw ay gumagalaw towards the front of the tube with this speed. Yan, 8 times 10 to the 6, 8 million meters per second along the x-axis. Now surrounding the neck of the tube are coils of wire. Yan yung sinasabi kong coils of wire na nakikreate ng magnetic field, no? So, yung magnetic field, mahina lang, 0.025 Tesla. So, this magnetic field will direct the electrons towards the screen. No? Sabi dito, directed at an angle of 60 degrees to the x-axis, lying in the xy plane. Calculate the magnetic force on the electron. So, to solve this problem, kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina, gawa muna tayo ng xyz axis. Okay? Tapos, i-plot natin dito yung mga vector quantities. Una, meron daw tayong velocity na 8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second along the x-axis. Ito yung x, ito yung y, at ito yung z. So, ilagay natin ang velocity vector along the x-axis. Ito ngayon ang velocity vector natin na v. Next, meron tayong magnetic field no? na 0.025 Tesla directed at an angle of 60 degrees to the x-axis lying in the x-y plane. So, ito yung x-y plane. No? So, meron daw tayo dyang 60 degrees to the x-axis. Okay, gawa tayo dito ng isa pang vector. No? Magnetic field vector. Ayan, ito yung biko. Tapos, lagyan natin ng angle na 60 degrees daw according to the problem. Okay? So, meron na tayo ngayong velocity at meron na tayong magnetic field. So, makukuha na natin yung force. Ano nga ang expression sa pagkukompute ng magnetic force? Sa isang charged particle, F is equal to QVB multiplied by the sine of the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. So, erecta na lang natin yan sa calculator. Okay? Q is the charge of an electron, so that's constant, 23, multiplied by the velocity, which is 8 times 10 to the 6. 8 times 10 to the 6, times the magnetic field, which is 0 0.025, 0 0.025, times the sine of the angle between the two vectors, so sine of 60 degrees. Okay. Equals. Ayan. May nakuha na tayong sagot. 2.8 approximately. So, the force is equal to 2.8 times 10 to the negative 14 newtons. Okay. So, kung ilalagay natin dito yung force, pasaan kaya ang force? Remember, you use your right hand to determine the direction of the force. You curl your fingers Four fingers from the velocity vector towards the magnetic field. Okay? So, dapat yung four fingers mo, ganito mag-curl. Mula dito, papunta doon. Saan tuturo yung thumb mo? Di ba pataas? Okay, so, that indicates that the direction of force is upward. Tama ba yan? Actually, mali. Bakit? Kasi yung upward force na yun, by default, is for positive charges. Di ba? Eh, yung given dito sa problem, eh, ano bang klaseng charge yan? Di ba yan na isang electron na negative ang charge? Yes! So, dahil negative ang charge niya, yung direction ng force na mararamdaman is opposite dapat. Okay? So, kung makikita natin kanina, di ba dito, yung charge na gumagalaw ay proton. So, gumana yung right hand rule. Tinuro tayo sa negative y-axis. Okay? Kasi positive yung charge niyan. Ngayon, kapag negative ang charge at ginamit mo yung right hand rule, Dapat, yung direction ng force opposite sa makukuha mong direction. Bakit? Kasi by default, yung right hand rule na yun ay para sa mga positive charges. So again, kung gagamit ka ng right hand rule, velocity papunta sa magnetic field, yung thumb mo tuturo sa taas.
So that is the direction of the force if the charge is positive. But since this is an electron and it has a negative charge, yung makukuha nating direction ng force, opposite dapat. So dito ko ngayon ilalagay. Ito ngayon yung direction ng magnetic force na kanyang nararamdaman. No? So kung isusulat ko yung vector force, F is equal to 2.8 times 10 raised to negative 14 newtons, no? lagyan ko dito ng negative sign. No? Lagyan ko lang siya ng AZ. Ayan, to indicate that it's directed along the negative Z axis. Okay? So, tatandaang mabuti ha, ang direction ng force ay magre-reverse kung ang charge na involved ay negative charge. Okay? Take note of that. Huwag kakalimutan. Next problem. So, ito proton naman. No? A proton is moving in a circular orbit of radius 14 cm in a uniform 0.35 Tesla magnetic field which is perpendicular to the velocity of the proton. Find the speed of the proton. Okay, so we have learned in our discussion that if the velocity vector is perpendicular with the magnetic field vector, the charged particle will move along a circular path. Diba? Iikot siya. Circular yung path na kanyang travel. Assume nyo na lang na perfect circle yan. Okay? So, yan yung path na itatravel ng charged particle kung ang velocity vector ay perpendicular sa magnetic field vector. Which is, ito yung sinasabi dun sa problem. Ngayon, ano daw ang speed ng proton? Yan. So, paano natin malalaman yung speed ng proton? Actually, may formula yun. Ano? Kung nakalimutan mo yung formula, madali lang yung i-derive. Paano? So, since circular yung path, yung charged particle ay makakaramdam ng centripetal force. So, meron tayong centripetal force na i-equate mo naman dun sa magnetic force Fb. Okay? Force due to the magnetic field. We know that this centripetal force from mechanics, this is equal to mv squared over r. And this magnetic force is equal to QVB. Nawala na yung sine theta. Bakit? Kasi nga po, perpendicular ang velocity at saka magnetic field. So, yung sine of 90 is 1. Kaya QVB na lang ang natira. So, dito, makakancel yung isang V. Ito. At ito mawawala. So, pag kinumpit mo ngayon, yung velocity equal siya ngayon sa BQR over M. Again, in case nakalimutan mo yung formula na ito, madali lang siyang i-derive. Okay? Now, let us substitute the values to get the speed of the proton. Erecta na natin yan sa calculator. Fraction sign, yung magnetic field natin, ang value ay 0 0.35. 0 0.35. Multiply natin ang Q. Charge ng proton actually is the same as the charge of the electron. So, constant 23. Multiplied by the radius which is 14 cm. Gawin natin meters, 0 0.14. And we divide it by the mass of the particle. Mass ng proton. Sa calculator, ang mass ng proton ay constant 0, 1. So shift, constant 0, 1. Okay, ayan. Meron na tayo ngayong B, Q, R over M equals, ayan. Ang sagot na nakuha natin is uh, approximately 4.7 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Sulat so, natin dito, 4.7 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So, ganyang kabilis gumalaw yung proton. 4.7 million meters per second. What if gawin natin yung electron? Sa tingin ninyo, anong mangyayari sa velocity? Okay? Kung gagawin natin electron yan, ang magbabago lang actually is yung mass. Diba? Yung mass niya ay di hamak na mas maliit kumpara dun sa mass ng proton. No? So, halimbawa, baguhin natin yan. What if gawin natin itong electron? So, paltan lang natin, ano? Shift constant 0,3. Yan, mas ng electron. Dapat, lalaki yung makukuha nating value. Mas malaki ng dihama kumpara dito. Okay? So, ayan. Ang nakuha natin is 8.6 times 10 to the 9. Parang imposible ito. Bakit? Imposible ito. Bakit? Kasi ang pinakamabilis ng speed is the speed of light. Which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay? So, kung gagawin mo yung electron, impractical. Hindi posible yan. Kaya, sa problem na ito, anong ginamit na particle? Hindi electron. Proton yung ginamit. Okay? So, tandaan natin, may limiting speed ang mga bagay sa universe. And that's the, the speed of light. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And nothing can go beyond that speed. Okay? Next.
in an experiment designed to measure the magnitude of a uniform magnetic field. Ayan. Sa isa daw experiment, we need to measure the magnitude of a magnetic field, which is uniform. No? Meron daw mga electrons na nag-accelerate from rest through a potential difference of 350 volts. Ayan, meron tayong 350 volts na potential difference which will be used to accelerate electrons and then when they accelerate, they will enter a uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the velocity vector of the electrons. Ayan, so kung perpendicular ang velocity vector dun sa magnetic field, remember, anong itsura ng path na itatravel ng mga electrons na to? They will travel along a circular path, kagaya dito. Ayan. So, dito nag-glow yung path na dinadaanan ng mga electrons. Kaya naging visible yan. Okay? The electrons traveled along a curved path na ang radius daw ay 7.5 cm. Tanong, ano ang magnitude ng magnetic field? No? At ano daw ang angular speed ng mga electrons? Okay. So, ang hinahanap natin dito is magnetic field. ba Experiment nga. Ayan eh. Para malaman ang magnitude ng magnetic field. So, paano natin yan malalaman? Hmm. Meron tayong potential difference. No? Dahil sa potential difference na yan, magkakaroon ng acceleration. Yung mga electrons na initially ay at rest. Hanggang sa sila ay gumalaw. Pag sila ay gumalaw, of course, mag-acquire sila ng kinetic energy. ba? So, from being at rest, tapos maya-maya gagalaw na siya, magkakaroon ng pagbabago sa kinetic energy yung mga electrons. So, if there is a change in kinetic energy, sa natin pwedeng i-equate yung change in kinetic energy? Ah, dito pwede natin gamitin yung concept na natutunan natin sa mechanics. No? Yung work kinetic energy theorem. No? So, yung change in kinetic energy, pwede natin siyang i-equate dun sa net work done. So, alam natin na yung change in kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times the mass multiplied by the final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared. How about the net work done? Saan manggagaling yung net work done? Ah, manggagaling yan dun sa potential difference. Remember that we define potential difference VAB as the work done per unit charge. So, if I want to get the net work done, I just multiply the charge with the potential difference VAB. Okay? So, that's it. No? So, dito, ano ang ating compute? Hmm. Itong initial velocity, initially zero yan. ba? At alam natin, yung charge na involved ay mga electrons. At alam din natin ang potential difference. So, may makukuha tayo ditong final velocity. So, that final velocity can be computed from this equation. Ito initially zero. So, dito makakaroon ako ng 2 times Q multiplied by VAB divided by the mass. Itong M na to, tapos saka ako siya kunan ng square root. Rekta na natin yan sa calculator, ha? Okay, so, sa calculator, gawa lang tayo ng square root and then fraction sign, 2 times yung charge which is the electronic charge constant 23 multiplied by the given potential difference 350 volts divided by the mass of the electron constant 3 sa calculator okay then equals ayan may nakuha na tayong speed na 11.1 times 10 to the 6 okay so the final velocity is 11.1 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Ito na ba ang ating final answer? Actually, hindi naman yan ang itinatanong. Ang itinatanong ay magnitude ng magnetic field. Okay, paano natin malalaman yan? Di ba kanina meron tayong formula ng velocity which is equal to B Q R over M. So from this, makukumpute natin yung magnetic field na B. That B is equal to MV divided by QR. Save ko muna to. Shift, store, A. Yan. So, to solve for the magnetic field, that's MV over QR. Okay? MV over QR. Mass is the mass of the electron. Constant 3 sa calculator. Times the velocity, which is, eto, nakastore sa A. Divided by QR. So, yung Q charge ng electron, which is constant, 23, multiplied by the radius, 
which is 7.5 cm. Gawin natin meters, 0.075. Okay, equals. Ayan, ang nakuha natin sagot is 8.4 times 10 to the minus 4. 8.4 times 10 to the minus 4 unit is Tesla. Next, ano daw ang angular speed ng electrons? Remember that the angular speed is omega and that is equal to V over R. ba? So, kapag itong V na to, dinivide ko ng R, ang matitira na lang is yung BQ over M. ba? So, ito yung B. Okay? Multiply ko siya ng Q at i-divide ko ng M. Okay? So, yung B na yan is yung answer ko sa calculator times Q which is the charge of the electron, constant 23 uli, divided by the mass of the electron, constant 03 naman. Okay, equals, yan, ang nakuha nating sagot is 147.9 times 10 to the 6. So, gawin na lang natin yung ano, uh, scientific notation. It's 1.5 approximately. No? So, this is 1.5 times 10 raised to 8. Anong unit ng angular velocity? That is radians per second. Okay? So, meron tayo ditong velocity, linear velocity, which is meters per second. At meron tayong angular velocity, which is radians per second. Ito naman siya, 1.5 times 10 to the 8. Actually, pwede na natin yung i-shortcut eh, no? Hindi na tayo mag-BBQ over M. Bakit? Kasi nga, meron na tayong V. I-divide lang natin ng radius, ba? So, ang alternative solution dyan is yung alpha A, which is yung velocity mo. I-divide mo na lang ng radius na 7.5 cm. So, 0.075. Dapat ang sagot ganun din. Ayan, no? We have uh, 1.48. No? Or 1.5 na lang. Times 10 to the 8. Radians per second. Kagaya rin ang sagot natin kanina. Okay? Next problem. A magnetron. Ano ba yung magnetron? Yan yung device na nasa loob ng microwave oven na nagkakreate ng magnetic field. Okay? So, magnetron. No? Katunog ng megatron. <laughs> okay. Yung magnetron na yan, nag i daw siya ng ano, electromagnetic waves. Na ang frequency ay... 2450 MHz. Actually, yan yung 2.4 GHz na frequency. ba? Yung frequency na yan, maraming gumagamit. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, microwave oven. Kasi libre yung paggamit ng frequency na yan. That's the 2.4 GHz band. Or to be more precise, 2450 MHz. Ang tanong, ano daw ang magnetic field na required para sa mga electrons to move in a circular path? na ang frequency ay ito. Ah, so dito ang itinatanong ay magnetic field. So to solve this problem, kinakailangan na i-relate natin itong frequency na ito dun sa angular frequency. Ano nga ang relationship ng frequency na F at ng angular frequency? Omega, the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi F. Okay? Tapos, alam natin yung omega. ba? May formula yan na derived natin kanina. That's BQ over M. Ayan. So, kung itong omega na to ay equal sa 2 pi f, pwede ko siyang equate dito. 2 pi f pala yan. And from this, makakaroon ako ngayon ng expression sa pagkocompute ng B. No? That B is equal to 2 pi f m over q. 2 pi f multiplied by m over q. Ayan. So, ngayon, ang i-input ko sa calculator is yung frequency na given yung mass ng particle which is actually electron at yung charge ng particle which is the charge of the electron okay so uh, compute na natin yan sa calculator okay so the magnetic field is equal to 2 pi fm 2 pi times the frequency na 2450 mega is times 10 to the 6 multiplied by the mass ang mass ng electron is constant 3 Tapos, i-divide natin siya ng charge na constant 23 naman. Okay, equals, ayan. May nakuha na tayong sagot. I-engineering na lang natin. 87.5. Yan. So, the answer is 87.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So, mili Tesla yung makukuha nating unit. Okay? So, di ba madali lang? Tandaan po ha, yung relationship ng angular frequency at ng frequency in hertz. Omega is equal to 2 pi f. 
And omega is equal to BQ over M. Na-derive na natin yan kanina. So from this, kinumpute natin yung B which is equal to 2 pi FM over Q. That's it. Madali lang. Okay? Now, let us solve another problem. A straight horizontal copper rod carries a current of 50 amperes from west to east in a region between the poles of a large electromagnet. Ayan, kanina mga charges lang yung gumagalaw sa isang region na may magnetic field. Ngayon, meron na tayong conductor na may dumadaloy na current. Okay? West to east daw. Halimbawa, ito yung conductor natin. Ayan, ito. Tapos, may kuryenteng dumadaloy sa conductor. No? East to west daw eh. So, from west to east pala. From west to east, eto siya. Gano kalaki yung current? Eto yung I, equal yan sa 50 amperes. Ayun, yung given current. Next, eto daw ay nasa pagitan ng poles ng isang malaking electromagnet. And there is a horizontal magnetic field towards the northeast. Ayan. So, kung northeast, halimbawa, gawa tayo dito ng reference natin. Tapos, eto yung... X-axis. Kung yan ay papunta sa northeast, ay di 45 degrees yun, north of east. So, gawa tayo ng vector. Ano bang klaseng vector yan? A magnetic field, ito yun. So, this is the magnetic field vector. Tapos, andito ngayon yung current natin, no? Which is traveling along the conductor. So, tanong, ano daw ang magnitude at direction ng force? Sa isang metrong section ng rod. Ah, if you recall, the formula for finding the force experienced by a current carrying conductor, F, is equal to B, I, L, multiplied by sine of theta. Okay, next. Yung force na yan, makukumpute natin kasi given ang magnetic field, given yung current, no? Given din yung length na 1 meter and sine of theta. Sir, ano ba yung theta? Yung theta, yun yung angle sa pagitan ng uh, IL at saka ng B. Bakit? Kasi po, remember, this force can be written as a cross product. Di ba yan ay yung IL cross B? Ayan. Ito yung first vector at ito yung pangalawang vector. So, yung theta is yung angle sa pagitan ng IL. Ito kasi yung current na dumadaan dun sa kahabaan ng conductor na may length na L. Okay? So, ang angle na yan ay 45 degrees. So, erekta na natin yan sa calculator. Ano? B, the magnetic field is 1.2 Tesla multiplied by the current na 50 amperes times the length, which is 1, multiplied by sine of 45. Okay, equals, the answer is 42.5. Okay, 42.4 newtons. Ano kaya ang direction niyan? Paano natin malalaman yung direction? Para malaman natin yung direction, i-curl mo yung fingers mo, apat na fingers sa kanang kamay, from the vector na IL papunta sa B. So dito, eh di, dapat ganito mag-curl yung fingers mo. Yan, ganito. Mula dito papunta doon. So saan ngayon tuturo yung thumb mo? Diba? Papunta sa'yo. So, kung dito, ito yung X at ito yung Y. So, yung direction kung saan tumuro ang thumb mo, yun naman ngayon yung Z-axis. Okay? So, we can now write the vector force. The vector force is 42.4 newtons along the positive Z-axis. Okay? So, ayan. Lagay natin ngayon dito sa drawing yung direction ng force. Dito sa pupunta ngayon. Okay, ayan, dito siya pupunta along the positive z-axis. So, gagalaw yung conductor papunta dito, paharap. Next, letter B. Ano daw yung magnitude ng maximum force sa conductor? Ah, magiging maximum yung force na nararamdaman ng conductor na ito kung ang magnetic field ay perpendicular sa kanya. Kasi maximum itong F kapag ang sine theta ay naging 1. Ano? Kailan ba magiging 1 yung sine theta kapag ang theta ay 90 degrees? So that will happen kung halimbawa yung magnetic field sa problem, ganito na yung itsura. Ayan. Ito na ang magnetic field. Perpendicular na ngayon yung magnetic field dun sa length ng conductor. So in that case, the magnitude of the force which is maximum will be equal to BIL. No? So pag kinumpute natin yan, 1.2 times 50 times 1. Yan. So, so, F max, lagay natin dito. The maximum force 
is equal to 60 newtons. Okay? So, di ba madali lang? Sobrang dali lang. Mani-mani lang yan. Sisi lang yan sa inyo. Dahil dyan, mag-solve pa tayo ng isa pang problem. A rectangular coil, ayan, kanina current carrying conductor lang. Ngayon, may coil na tayo. Ano? Yung coil daw, anong itsura? Rectangular. Dimensions niya is 5.4 cm by 8.5 cm. Tapos meron siyang 25 turns of wire. It carries a current of 15 milliamperes. Tapos, merong magnetic field which is applied parallel to the plane of the coil. Ano daw ang magnitude ng torque na nag-aak doon sa loop? Halimbawa, gawa tayo ng rectangle para siya ang magsilbing current loop dito sa problem. Ayan. Tapos, sabi niya, meron daw magnetic field parallel to the plane. Ayan. So, halimbawa, ito na lang yung magnetic field, no? Ito ngayon yung magnetic field ko na B. So, yung current loop, may kuryenteng dumadaloy dyan. May kuryente doon, kuryente pataas, iikot yung kuryente. Natutunan natin na kapag yung current loop ay perpendicular dun sa magnetic field, ano mangyayari sa current loop? Di ba iikot yan at makikreate siya ng torque? No? Ano nga yung formula ng torque? The torque tau is equal to I A cross B. Yan. So, kung kukunin natin ngayon yung magnitude niyan, tau is equal to I, A, multiplied by B, multiplied by the sine of theta. However, kita natin dito na itong magnetic field ay perpendicular dito sa conductor na ito at doon sa conductor na yan. No? Yan. Dahil perpendicular, 90 degrees yung theta. Ang matitira na lang dito is I, A, B. Kung isang turn lang, yung ating current loop. Pero sabi nung problem, there are 25 turns. Kaya dito, lalagyan natin ng multiplier na N. Yan. Lagyan natin ng multiplier na N kung sa ay multiple turns. Okay? So, sa calculator, compute na natin yan. There are 25 turns na imumultiply ko sa IAB. So, yung I natin, yung current niya, 15 milliamperes daw. So, that's 0 0.015. Multiplied by the area. Yung area niya is yung length times width. So, since naka-CM ito, gawin natin meters. 0 0.054 times 0 0.085. Tapos, multiply natin yan sa magnetic field na 0 0.35 Tesla. 0 0.35. Tapos, again, yung sine theta natin is 1. Kasi nga, 90 degrees naman. Perpendicular yung magnetic field dun sa dalawang segments na magkoko sa kanya para umikot yan. Okay? Equals, the answer is 6. Ano? 6.02 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay? So, that torque is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the negative 4. Anong unit niyan? Di ba? Ang torque, ay ang unit ay newton meters. Newton meters siya, pero hindi siya joule. Okay? Kasi yung joule na newton meter, yun ay unit ng work at saka ng energy. But this is torque. So, we don't express this newton meter as joule. No? As is na yan, newton meter. So, ayan. Marunong na tayong mag-compute ng torque na napuproduce sa isang current loop subjected to a given magnetic field. Okay? Next. Dito, yung uh, current loop natin circular naman. Ayan. A circular coil, 0 0.05 meters in radius. Meron naman siyang 30 turns. O, halimbawa, bilog. No? To solve this problem, i-drawing muna natin yung current loop na circular ang itsura. So, halimbawa, ito yung circular current loop mo. Ayan. Na dinadalo yun ang kuryente. Ang kuryente daw ay counterclockwise. So, kung counterclockwise, ganito yung ikot ng kuryente mo. Ayan. Tapos, may magnetic field. No? Ito yung magnetic field niya ngayon, ha? Okay, yung kulay pula. Halimbawa, ngayon, uh, di ba yung torque natin ay equal yan sa IA cross B? Yan. Equal siya sa IA cross B. Na pag kinumpito mo ang magnitude, ang magnitude niyan is equal to IAB multiplied by the sine of theta. Okay. So, uh, dito, yung area vector natin is yung bilog. Yan ay vector at meron siyang direction. Ano ang direction ng area vector? The direction of the area vector is always the normal 
to the plane containing the current loop. So, kung yan ay horizontal, yung direction niya is normal dun sa plane na yun. Kaya, eto nga yun, yung area vector natin. Okay? So, nakikita naman natin na ang area vector, ito, ay perpendicular doon sa magnetic field. ba? Diba? So, kaya ang sine theta dito magiging 1 na lang. Kasi nga, sine 90 equals 1. Ano? So, lagay na lang natin dito yung magnitude, ha? Torque is equal to IA times B. However, sabi sa problem, there are multiple turns. 30 turns yan. Kaya dapat multiply natin yan sa N. N multiplied by IA multiplied by B. Okay? Lagay na natin sa calcu. There are 30 turns multiplied by the current. Magkano yung kuryente yung dumadaloy sa coil? 5 amperes times area. Ano ba ang area ng current loop? Di ba bilog yan? Ang area ng circle is pi r squared. So, pi multiplied by the radius. How much is the radius? 0.05 meter. 0.05. 5 cm yan. Squared multiplied by the magnetic field whose value is 1.2 tesla. Yung 1.2 tesla na magnetic field, daba malaking value yun ng magnetic field, ha? Malakas na magnetic field yun. And the answer is 9 pi over 20 or 1.4. So we have tau equals 1.4. Unit of torque is newton meter. So far, ano mga problems na yung na-solve natin? Marunong na tayong mag-solve ng magnetic forces involving moving particles and current carrying conductors. Nakapag-solve na rin tayo ng torque na napuproduce sa isang current loop in a given magnetic field. ba? So this time, mag-compute naman tayo ng magnetic flux. Ano? Next problem, we have a magnetic field whose magnitude is B. So ayan, wala siyang numerical value. And it is directed along the positive Z-axis. Compute the magnetic flux passing through a hemisphere na ang radius daw ay R. Centered at the origin, bounded by the plane, Z equals 0. Okay, to illustrate the problem, gawa muna tayo ng X, Y, Z axis. Yan. Tapos gawa tayo ng hemisphere. So yung hemisphere, alam natin, meron siyang base na nasa Z is equal to 0. So nandito sa sa X, Y plane, no? Eto ngayon yung base ng ating hemisphere. Lagyan natin yan ng dome. Halimbawa, ito yung dome niya. Okay, <laughs> hindi siya perfect. Pero pagpasensyahan nyo na yung hemisphere na ginawa ko. Ano? <laughs> now, lagay natin yung magnetic field. Yung magnetic field is directed upward kasi AZ. So, ito yung magnetic field dyan. Okay? Ang itinatanong yung total magnetic flux through the hemisphere. Okay? So, the symbol for flux is phi. Paano ba natin kinocompute ang magnetic flux na phi? Di ba yan ay equal sa surface integral ng B? Yes. It's equal to the surface integral B dot DS. Yung B natin is uh, given in rectangular coordinates kasi AZ. Pero pwede rin naman na cylindrical kasi sa cylindrical meron din tayong AC. Pero yung DS natin is yung surface ng sphere. Di ba? So, kung yan ay surface ng sphere, yung DS natin ay naka-spherical coordinates. Ano ba yung DS ng surface ng sphere sa spherical coordinate system? That's R squared sine of theta d theta d phi. A, R. Okay, so yan ay naka-spherical coordinates. Pero, idadat mo siya sa magnetic field natin na naka-rectangular or cylindrical. Hindi sila compatible. So, kung hindi sila compatible, hindi mo ma-execute or ma-evaluate yung dot product. So, anong gagawin? Uh, posible ito i-convert mo into rectangular or cylindrical. Or, ito naman ang gawin mo. No? Kung gusto mo itong BAZ, i-convert mo naman into spherical para maging compatible sa dun sa DS. Okay? Pero actually, matrabaho yun. Huwag na natin yung gawin kasi may shortcut. No? Ano ang shortcut? Ah, ito yun. Kung kukumputin mo yung flux, yung flux kasi yun yung tumatagos dito sa curved surface ng sphere. Diba? Pero lahat ng flux na tatagos yan, tatagos din dito sa base yung bilog. ba? <laughs> so, pag kinumpute mo yung flux sa bilog at kinumpute mo yung flux dito sa surface ng hemisphere, parehas lang din yun. So, para hindi tayo mahirapan, dito na lang tayo mag-evaluate ng integral. Okay? Sir, mag-evaluate pa tayo ng integral? Actually, hindi na. Bakit? Kasi, mag-evaluate lang tayo ng surface integral kung hindi natin alam 
yung actual surface area. But this is a circle. So, kung yan ay circle, alam natin ang area niyan ay pi r squared. ba? Diba? At hindi na rin tayo mag-evaluate nung dot product. Bakit? Kasi po, yung ds, again, is perpendicular to the area. no? So, ito yung area. no? Nasa xy plane yan. So, yung kanyang area vector is ito. No? Perpendicular dun sa plane ng area. So, kita natin na itong ds na to at itong magnetic field, parallel na sa isa't isa. Kaya hindi ka na magdadat product. Simpleng multiplication na lang yan. Okay? So, now, the flux is equal to B, which is equal to, eto yon B. So, how about the unit vector? Uh, actually, pareha silang AZ. Kaya AZ that AZ is 1. So, magiging simpleng multiplication na lang to B multiplied by the area nung surface na ito, which is a circle, no? Pi, ano ba ang radius niyan? Di ba given? Ang radius niyan is capital letter R. So, R squared. So, ano na ang sagot? Ayan, meron na tayong flux equal sa pi R squared B. Ayan. O, ba diba? Sobrang dali lang. No? May mga problem na sa simula. Sa unang tingin, mukhang mahirap. Pero, of course, if you think outside of the box, you will realize that, hmm, tricky problem lang to. Meron palang mas madaling solution. Pwede akong gumamit ng alternative solution na ang sagot na makukuha, kagaya lang na makukuha dun sa conventional na solution na usually, yun ang una mong naiisip. So, if ever nakakita kayo ng ganitong problem, hindi ka na magde-derive. Alam mo na, ito na yung formula niyan. Pi R squared B. Okay? <laughs> Next problem. Below is a perspective view of a flat surface with an area of 3 square centimeters in a uniform magnetic field. So, uniform ang magnetic field niya. Hmm, the magnetic flux through the surface is, ah, so given yung flux, ang itinatanong, ano daw ang magnitude ng magnetic field? At saka, direction ng area vector. Ah, okay. So, kanina, alam natin na yung flux, paano nga kinocompute yun? That's the integral of B that ds. So kung alam ko na yung area, hindi na ako mag-integrate, no? That product na lang 'yan, 'di ba? B dot s. Yung s yun yung area. Okay? Sa problem, ang ginamit niya na area is a. So gawin ko na lang tong a, b dot a. Now, alam natin na yung dot product na 'yan ay pwede nating express as b a cosine theta, 'di ba? Okay. So jan ano yung theta natin? Theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. So, kung magdo-drawing tayo, limbawa, gawa tayo ng horizontal line. Ito yung reference horizontal line natin. Tapos, ito yung plane. Yan. 30 degrees to. So, ito nga yun ang nakikita ko. Ano? Yung gilid na yan. Ito yung side view na 30 degrees. Tapos, meron tayong magnetic field. Yung magnetic field natin is directed, ayan, horizontally. Okay? So, ngayon, nasan yung direction ng area vector? Actually, yung area vector natin is normal nga daw doon sa plane. So, eto siya ngayon. Kung normal, eh di dapat, eto siya. Eto ay 90 degrees. So, yung 90 degrees na yan, dadagdagan ko pa dito ng magkana yun, 30. So, mula dito hanggang doon, meron ako 120 degrees. ba? Diba? Ulitin ko ha. So, dapat itong area vector na to, normal doon sa plane. Na? So, mula dito hanggang doon, 90 degrees kasi normal, perpendicular. Dagdagan pa natin nung inclination nung plane dun sa reference na horizontal, which is how much? 30 degrees daw. So, 30 plus 90 is 120. Okay. So, ngayon, anong gusto nating malaman? Gusto nating malaman, itong theta na ito, yan, yan yung angle sa pagitan ng area vector at saka ng magnetic field. Okay? So, paano ko malalaman? Di ba itong straight line na to 180 degrees yan? So, yung 180, mamainusan ko lang nung 120. Di ba? So, that theta is actually equal to 180 minus 120. So, that's equal to 60 degrees. Yan. So, 60 degrees yan ngayon. No? So, kung gusto mong compute then itong B, that's equal to the flux divided by A multiplied by cosine of theta. Okay, so given yung flux, given din yung area, at alam na natin yung theta. Okay, so sa calculator, gawa natin yan ng paraan. Ano? The flux is 0 0.9 milli. 0 0.9 milli is times 10 to the negative 3. Divide natin siya ng area. Ano yung area? 
3 square centimeters daw yan. Okay, yung 3 na yan, naka square cm. Convert natin yan to square meters. No? So, there are 100 cm in 1 meters. Tapos, i-square pa natin kasi area siya. Kaya yung 3, i-divide ko ng 100 squared. Multiply natin ang cosine of 60. Now, equals, ay, eksakto yung sagot. Ang sagot na nakuha natin ay 6. No? Eksakto 6. Anong unit niyan? Tesla. Shit! Yung 6 Tesla na yan ay napakalaking value ng magnetic field. Okay? So, this magnetic field is actually a strong magnetic field. Usually, ang mga bar magnet, hindi umaabot ng 1 Tesla. No? Yung mga bar magnet, hindi umaabot ng 1 Tesla. This is a very strong magnetic field. Coming, perhaps, from a very strong electromagnet. No? Or kung hindi sa isang malakas na electromagnet, baka yan ay isang laboratory magnet na sobrang lakas. Super conducting magnet siguro ito. No? Kasi malakas yung magnetic field na kanyang napoproduce. Okay? Now, let us solve the last problem. For this episode, this time, mag-compute ulit tayo ng magnetic field. no? Pero hindi na given ang flux. Ang magnetic field na kukumpute natin ay nanggagaling sa electric current. no? Ano daw ang magnitude ng magnetic field sa layong 30 cm mula sa isang napakahabang conductor na may current na 12 amperes? Actually, may formula yan eh. Napakasimple lang ng formula para dito. Yung magnetic field is B. That's equal to mu naught multiplied by I divided by 2 pi R. Okay? So, kapag ikaw ay may napakahabang conductor, no? kung saan may kuryenteng dumadaloy na ang magnitude ay I, kung gusto mong malaman ang magnetic field no? sa isang point, for example, sa point na ito na may layong R no? mula doon sa conductor, the formula for finding the magnetic field B is given by this expression. Mu naught multiplied by the magnitude of the current divided by 2 pi r. Yung r is yung distance. So, erecta na natin yan sa calculator. Okay? Sa calculator, mu naught is constant 33. So, shift constant 33. That's the permeability of free space times the current. Ang magnitude ay 12 amperes. Divide natin ng 2 pi r. Yung r ay 30 cm. So, 0.3 meters yan. Okay? Ayan, meron tayong 8 micro. B is equal to 8. So, the unit of magnetic field is Tesla. So, micro Tesla. Ayan, no? Typical yan, no? Maliit lang yung magnetic field na yan. Pero yung kanina, na 6 Tesla ay napakalaking magnetic field na. Kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo, yung value na nakompute natin kanina is coming from a very strong magnet. So, Ano pa yung posibleng lumabas sa mga exam? Ah, halimbawa, uh, meron kang solenoid. No? Ito yung solenoid. No? Parang spring siya. Multiple turns yan. Tapos yung solenoid, may dumadaloy na current dyan. So kung may dumadaloy na current, magkakaroon tayo ng magnetic field. Ano bang itsura ng magnetic field ng isang solenoid? ba diba, parang kagaya lang siya ng magnetic field ng isang bar magnet. Kaya nga tinawag natin na solenoidal yan eh. Meron siyang magnetic field na kagaya ng magnetic field ng isang bar magnet. So, ganyan ang itsura. Okay? So, posibleng itanong sa'yo, ano ang magnetic field sa loob ng solenoid? No? The magnetic field inside the solenoid is given by this formula. Mu naught multiplied by N I divided by L. Okay? Tandaan nyo yung formula na yan, ha? This is the formula for finding the magnetic field inside a solenoid. So, mu naught is the permeability of free space. N is the number of turns. I is the current. And L is the length of the solenoid. No? Yung length. So, ang posible pang lumabas sa exam is yung toroid. I-research nyo na lang to para may magawa kayong assignment. No? So, yung toroid, para siyang donut. Tapos, may nakapulupot na wire. So, halimbawa, gagawa ako ng donut. Ito yung donut mo. May nakapulupot dyan na wire. Ayan. Tawag dyan is... Toroid. Yung wire na yan, dadalo yan ng kuryente. Makakaroon tayo ng magnetic field, no? Tinanong ka, ano ang magnetic field sa loob ng toroid? Okay, may formula yan. I-research nyo na lang. Okay? <laughs> Para may magawa kayo. So, this problem is the last for this episode. I hope that you will take time to practice solving similar problems. Para pagdating ng quiz, makakuha kayo ng mataas na score. Okay? So, thank you for watching and good luck on your examinations. Bye!